tonight on the eve of Remembrance Weekend. After being branded a disgrace, protesters say pro-Palestinian marches will go ahead and will be peaceful. These are not hate marches. These are a sense of unity for the government to see what we want them to do is to call for a ceasefire and to stop the bombing and stop the killing. Also making the headlines, Health Secretary Michael Matheson agrees to pay the full £11,000 of the phone bill racked up on holiday. The latest phase of a £100 million project to revitalise Paisley Town Centre has been unveiled. And in sport, had enough. Brendan Rogers says it's time to scrap bar. No, listen, if you asked me right now, I would get rid of it. Would you? Absolutely. I'm Vanessa Kennedy in Edinburgh. And I'm John Mackay in Glasgow. This is the STV News at six. Good evening. Protesters attending pro-Palestinian marches across the country this Remembrance Weekend say they'll be peaceful and focused on unity. Nationwide demonstrations will take place at the same time as those marking Armistice Day. The Prime Minister has called it disrespectful. It comes as the Home Secretary, Suela Braverman, is facing calls to resign after accusing the police of bias towards those protesting. Vanessa Taff has the latest. It's a chant that's causing some political controversy. But for these Edinburgh University students, it's all about their right to have their voices heard. All we can do is, is come and then show solidarity and try and put pressure on the institutions that we can influence. China, you know, show the, spread the message and spread the awareness of the Palestinian cause. I'm hopeful that more people are going to start joining the movement and it'll just continue to get bigger. Protesters staging a sit-in at the Kelvin Grove Museum this afternoon were escorted out by Police Scotland. The UK government has objected to protests like those happening in Glasgow, Edinburgh and Aberdeen this Remembrance Weekend. Some from Scotland's Jewish community say that the protests have become a place for anti-Semitism and even violence. The Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, has branded the pro-Palestinian demonstrations as hate marches. She is facing calls to resign over comments she made about a double standard in the policing of the protests. The words that she used are not words that I myself would have used, but I have a productive relationship with her as a colleague. Bushra will be one of hundreds attending this weekend's protest in Glasgow. I myself and many others are feeling like we are under a dark cloud. I feel like every day we wake up and we're seeing these horrific images. These are not hate marches. These are a sense of unity for the government to see what we want them to do is to call for a ceasefire and to stop the bombing and stop the killing. I feel like those that are passerbys are actually shouting abuse to those that are attending those marches. Just last week we were walking um, through Jamaica Street in Glasgow and we had balaclava cladded people, you know, shouting, calling us terrorists. Police Scotland say they've an appropriate policing plan in place and that hate crime, violence or abuse do not represent legitimate protest. But actions may speak louder than words this weekend. Vanessa Taff, STV News. The Health Secretary has agreed to reimburse the full cost of the £11,000 bill racked up on his parliamentary iPad. Michael Matheson had been under growing pressure after the data bill was made, was made public following a trip to Morocco last year. Mr Matheson said after reflecting long and hard, he accepts the SIM card should have been replaced at an earlier stage. Well, our political correspondent Ewan Petrie joins us now. And Ewan, why has Michael Matheson taken this decision? Well, this change of heart only emerged in the past hour or so in a statement released by the SNP. Michael Matheson has been under intense pressure to explain just exactly how on earth he managed to rack up such a huge bill in such a short space of time. He said yesterday 
He was not aware that he was supposed to have changed over the SIM card within his iPad. But then the Scottish Parliament said he had in fact been warned up to a year in advance of this holiday to Morocco and on multiple occasions since then. So Michael Matheson says he's reflected long and hard on this and accepts it should have been replaced earlier. He will now pay this bill from his own money rather than expecting taxpayers to pick up the tab. And you, and how damaging has this been for the health secretary? Well, Michael Matheson recognises that his own integrity has been called into question here. He, take, he says he takes that very seriously, as well as questions around the integrity of the Scottish Parliament. He has maintained that these charges are in relation to constituency business. But there is a wider question here for the SNP around transparency. The Scottish Government is currently embroiled in a row over its WhatsApp messages during COVID. And this was simply feeding into these questions over the openness of ministers with the public. Opposition parties were sensing that this was cutting through with voters. And while Michael Matheson might hope that this puts an end to those questions, that does seem highly unlikely. Ewan, thank you. Other stories, and the body of a woman has been recovered from the River Kelvin in Glasgow. Formal identification is still to take place, but the family of a 58-year-old woman who was reported missing in the area have been informed. There are no apparent suspicious circumstances. A search was launched last month after emergency services received reports of concern for two people near Eldon Street in the city's West End. A man was rescued from the water. A second man has appeared in court charged with murder following a mass disturbance last month in Rutherglen. Stuart McGeehy was found seriously injured on Farm Loan Road and died, later died. 22-year-old Craig McCall, who was also charged with assault and possessing offensive weapons, made no plea. Hundreds of Scottish water staff have walked out on strike in the first of 48 days of planned action. Workers with Unite, Unison and GMB trade unions hit the picket lines as part of a running dispute over pay and a new grading structure. Unions say the strikes could impact essential services and repairs. Scottish Water say plans are in place to minimise disruption. This is the most avoidable strike action that our members would ever have to take part in. We are looking for this year's pay offer to be separated from the new pay and grading structure. I'm really disappointed that uh, we're facing industrial action and strikes over a pay deal which is, we believe, an excellent pay deal by any standard and one of the best in the public sector. Glasgow Central Station is set to undergo a £5 million redevelopment project. Network Rail announced that the work will include reconfiguring the layout of retail units, creating a multi-faith room in the customer lounge and enhancing accessibility. The first of three phases of the project begins next week, with work due to be completed by next winter. Tributes are being paid to STV's former political editor throughout the 1970s and 80s. Colin Mackay, who has died at the age of 79. Born in Glasgow in 1944, he went on to become the channel's longest serving political editor. Over four decades, he interviewed nine prime ministers and hosted general election coverage and political programmes on Scottish television. He also hosted radio programmes for the BBC and Radio Clyde and won Radio News Broadcaster of the Year in 1997. Now there's a warning tonight that the Scottish hospitality industry has just five weeks to be saved as high bills and debt from COVID reaps havoc across the sector. The body representing hundreds of bars, cafes and restaurants across the country is now calling for emergency support and a new long-term deal to help businesses thrive. Well, Brandon Cook joins us live from the grass market in Edinburgh. Brandon, big concern then for the future of hospitality here. Yeah, absolutely, Vanessa. As you can probably see behind me, it's starting to slowly fill up here in the grass market this evening. Businesses here hopeful for yet another busy Friday night. But whilst things may look pretty normal, underneath the surface, many of these businesses right across the country are struggling, uh, struggling from the pandemic, the effects from that, but also from the effects of rising bills. Many businesses, of course, have had to pass that cost on to the customer. And the question is really, is how long can that go on for. Tonight, with just five weeks until the Scottish budget is announced, the big question is what solutions can be found? 
It's mid-afternoon and this bar in Portobello is getting ready for what it hopes will be another busy Friday evening. Since it opened earlier this year, trade has been good, but balancing the books while the price of everything from electricity and gas to deliveries steadily rise has been tricky. Often it's meant passing costs on to customers. Some people see that as, if you look at two years ago, this, this pint costs X amount and that costs X amount. Most people don't see the kind of challenges behind the scenes as kind of hospitality in terms of sales and, and influx of people have come in with rising costs. They have had to increase prices to, to stay afloat. So I, I don't see that being a sustainable model. These challenges have got the hospitality body worried. They say the Scottish budget, which is set to be announced five weeks from now, must provide short and long-term support for businesses or many could go to the wall or fall further into debt after New Year. The Scottish Hospitality Group wants business rate relief brought in line with England and Wales and a firm plan to grow the sector going forward. What we need now is, in a short term, um, injection in the arm from the Scottish Government and that's 75% rates relief uh, come the budget now in December and then that allows us then to open the door for further discussions in an industry-led group um, led by Scottish Hospitality Group. The Scottish Government says the budget already has an estimated 100,000 small businesses removed from rates altogether costing £729 million. It says decisions on non-domestic rates going forward will be made in the budget. That's being announced in just over a month's time. Brandon Cook, STV News, Edinburgh. The latest phase of a £100 million project to revitalise Paisley Town Centre has been unveiled. A brand new learning and cultural hub is set to open its doors this month following the reopening of the town hall. Caroline Lewis went to see how the project is trying to change the town's fortunes. In its heyday, it was a busy and bustling town centre. But those days are long gone. I remember when it was chock a block, you know, it was crowds all up and down the street. And as you can see, all the shops, it's empty, dying. This was a very, very busy place, Woolworths and all the other big shops. So it's a bit of a disaster. There's no parking for people to come do some shopping. Um, and there is quite a lot of empty shops. Like many high streets in Scotland, Paisley's is now littered with empty shops, meaning there's fewer reasons for people to visit. So how do you get people back into the town centre? Well, the council here is taking an innovative approach. We've really put culture at the heart of regeneration here. A really good culture offer in terms of gigs, exhibitions, that sort of thing. We see that as being the thing that will bring the life back to the high street and to Paisley and Renfrewshire as a whole. More than £100 million has been invested in boosting the town's cultural offerings, starting with the renovation of the iconic town hall, expanding its capacity to more than a 1,000 and giving previously unused spaces a purpose, including a new bar and terrace, a dance studio and a screening room. The work that we've done, just, just having opened this building that we're sitting in at the moment, has already seen significant footfall come into Paisley. If we can replicate that, we ensure that we become a tourist centre, that we're a must-visit destination, and that we make life better for everyone, everyone who lives here as a result. Found in the heart of the High Street, Paisley's new multi-million pound library will open its doors in a few weeks. But these youngsters are getting a sneak preview ahead of the public. It's amazing. I really like the interior and the architecture. It's very modern. I would definitely come back. I think it's really cool. It's a lot different from the old library. I would love to come back. And at the other end of the town, the flagship project is a £45 million transformation of Paisley's museum. What we've got here is what we've called a cultural corridor. So people have to walk through to get to each of these places. But actually, it's a place to be in our civic spaces, our public spaces. It's not just about the built, envi the built environment, but it's about the people of Paisley. It's about the tourism. But Renfrewshire Council came under fire when it decided to scrap an initiative allowing for three hours free parking in certain car parks, instead opting to allow one hour free of charge across the town. But business owners have criticised the move, saying it will be a fatal blow to those already struggling. 
It means that anybody within the town has got to do their business within one hour. They've got one hour free parking. But after that, they need they then need to pay four pounds. I think it, people will just go elsewhere. If I'm really honest, people will go to the out of town free car parking areas where they don't have to pay. The regeneration project should be completed during 2024 and perhaps return a once vibrant community to its former glory. Caroline Lewis, STV News. It's STV Children's Appeal Day and tonight there will be a full evening of programming dedicated to the charity which helps make a positive difference to the lives of children affected by poverty in Scotland. Well, our own Sean Batty will be co-presenting the programme with Lorraine Kelly. Uh, so, John, uh, Sean, what can we expect from tonight's programme? Well, it is, of course, the night we ask people in Scotland to get their purses out, including yourself, uh, to donate what they can. Uh, so we've got our big programme tonight at nine o'clock. Um, we've got lots of celebrities involved. We'll be hearing some of the stories about how the money's used, what a difference it makes to a lot of charities in Scotland. And also we'll be hearing from the great fundraisers across the country. Of course, there'll be lots of people that are watching just now that have taken part in the Edinburgh Kilt Walk, the Glasgow Kilt Walk, for example, and raised money for the STB Children's Appeal. So uh, you'll be hearing lots about that tonight <laughs> and, of course, lots of entertainment as well. well. Of course, you did your own challenge. That's right, yes. I headed off to Aaron with Laura Boyd. Uh, it was uh, quite a trip. I, now, I did say to the appeal, years ago I wanted to go into uh, physical retirement. I, I quite like the idea of coffee mornings. Um, but no, we're back to physical challenges. So Laura and I headed off to Aaron. I did a lot of cycling. Of course, I did the hard work, you know. Um, but we, we, we've raised lots of money and tonight we'll actually find out the, the total of what we've raised. But big, big challenge. The circumference of Arran is 55 miles. Your challenge is to make it round the whole island by any means necessary. What? And you must make it back in time for the last ferry tomorrow night. Expect, Expect some, some surprises some along the way. 55 miles? Are you kidding? We're barely off the ferry and our first challenge is a fundraising obstacle course at Brodick Primary. That's right, Laura. And it looks like we're going to get put through our paces before we can start our journey. It's actually really heavy. Is it? I like the Duke of Wellington. <laughs> the Duke of Arran. Right, enough messing about. I think we need to complete this obstacle course so we can get in our way. <laughs> I'm sorry, Abe. I know. Right. right, love you in you go. <laughs> oh, I think we'll need a wee bit of practice before setting off on the roads. Uh, I think we'll maybe need more than just a wee bit of practice. Bye. And we're off 55 miles. This could be a long couple of days. Looks like fun. So, uh, I think you'll need your earplugs for that. Lots of skin. <laughs> and as you say, I can see you did all the work. Uh, so before the appeal show, there's a, a special documentary at 7 o'clock called Scotland Stories, a sporting chat. That's right. I mean, it's looking at different ways of tackling poverty. So we're focusing on how sport can do that, bringing children together, bringing the families of children together. Um, the kids can play some sport. The, the families can talk about issues that they may have. Uh, and this is, of course, the main reason that we do this every single year. One in four children in Scotland still live in poverty and this is the reason why. Let's have a look at that documentary. Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air I know I can count on you Sometimes it seems the going is just too rough Achieve more Scotland run free sports camps across Glasgow during school holidays. fill the gap left when schools are off and they welcome hundreds of children every day. A lot of families really, really struggle. The aim is to make sure any child who needs a breakfast, needs a little bit of help, needs a little bit of encouragement, needs to come somewhere to feel safe, that's our holiday camps. The charity was set up 15 years ago to tackle youth violence in the north and east of Glasgow. Now they're present all year in schools throughout the city, improving lives and empowering kids through sport. So lots to look forward to, Sean. Lots to look forward to and lots of money hopefully coming in tonight. <laughs> of course, 7 o'clock uh, this evening, you've got that documentary, Coronation Street in Emmerdale, uh, and then followed on 9 o'clock by the main programme and we'll find out how much Scotland has donated this year. Friday night sorted. Enjoy yourself, Sean. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.
Stephen A. Smith says the way he can answer his critics is to get Hearts back to winning ways and climbing the Premiership table. The Goggy Club have just one win since September, with unrest growing among supporters. Meanwhile, Nick Montgomery says there's nobody more frustrated than him after Hibbs' winless run extended to seven games. Here's Jamie Borthwick. He's no stranger to expectation after a glittering career as a player. But just months into his first job in management, Stephen Naismith's in a battle to win over the fans. At a big club, the criticism will be there when you're, when you're not winning games. and I don't think there's anything you can say. I think everybody's got their own opinion. Everybody will understand that, or think they understand what it takes to be successful or what should be done. I've seen progress from where we've been, what we're doing. and. And like I said as well, in the, in the games, it's been small margins. If we can cut that out, then I do believe. Three defeats in close succession to Celtic and Rangers have stung the Hearts squad. But they insist they remain united ahead of tomorrow's trip to Motherwell. If we get points to the board, that we're, we're not too far away from, from kicking on. And as I say, I think we've got the players and I think all the players are behind the, the, the staff, the, the, the manager as well. So I think everyone's pulling together. Hebs again dropped points from a winning position in midweek. It's more than six weeks since the new boss at Easter Road tasted victory. It's a case of us just sticking at the process and continue doing what we're doing. We're at home, love being at Easter Road. You know, the fans are fantastic and they really do get behind the players. But um, yeah, there's no, no one more frustrated than, than me in terms of you know, going into games and feeling like we've, we've, you know, we've performed well enough to, to get the three points. Hebs host Kilmarnock tomorrow. Jamie Borthwick, STV News. Right, let's take a look at the weekend's Premiership games. St Mirren are away to Dundee. Craig Levine St Johnson hosts Ross County. On Sunday, Livingston Rangers is a 12 o'clock kickoff, while Celtic against Aberdeen gets underway at 2.30. To tennis, and Andy Murray and Ivan Lendl have ended their partnership for a third time. Lendl first started coaching Murray 12 years ago, then again in 2016. They teamed up again last year, but have agreed to part ways ahead of the 2024 season. To rugby, and Ali Price will have to earn his place in the Edinburgh rugby team. That's according to boss Sean Everett. The Scotland scrum half made the surprise loan move from rivals Glasgow Warriors, where he has found himself struggling for game time in recent months. And that, folks, is all your sports night. Have a great weekend. I'll see you again on Monday. Thanks, Raman. Now here's Sean with the weather forecast. A breezy morning will be followed up with a flurry of fresh delights for lunch. TUI sponsors STV Weather. A very good evening to you. Now I'm going to start off by showing you the forecast cloud cover for the weekend. And look at that for Saturday. Hardly a cloud in the sky. It's going to be a glorious day tomorrow for most of us. But then we'll start to see more clouds spreading in from the southwest on Sunday. Wet and windy weather returning along with milder conditions. But hopefully not until a wee bit later on the day. The weather front's uh, forecast models have just slowed it down a wee bit more. So hopefully not too bad, at least to start with on Sunday. Now tonight there will be a few scattered showers coming in from the north. That holds those temperatures a little bit. Just just a tiny bit higher than they were last night. Last night, our coldest night of the autumn so far. Out in the Harrow getting down to minus six in the North Islands. Tonight, they expect temperatures still fairly close to freezing. And of course, with the addition of those showers, possibility of some icy patches. And again, we could get a few mist and fog patches developing in one or two glens by the end of the night too. Now tomorrow, not much to say about the weather map because it is a clear map. It looks like someone's taken the dust and just wiped away all the cloud. A nice blank map for you. So yes, plenty of crisp sunshine tomorrow. Temperatures about seven or eight degrees Celsius. Now, talking of crisp, it's going to be a very crisp old night tomorrow night. Temperatures still parts of Ayrshire down to about minus three, but it's South Lanarkshire and also towards the lights of the borders and West Lothian. North Lanarkshire will see some of the lowest temperatures down to about minus three or minus four. So a very cold start to remember in Sunday, but dry and bright at least to start with. Windy and wet by the evening. Bye-bye. TUI sponsors STV Weather. Don't forget our appeal programme start in half an hour with the documentary Scotland Stories, a sporting chance and the full programme at nine o'clock. And we'll be back over the weekend from all of us for tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Good night.